Hi guys, this is Vidya and I hope you're doing well. So today I'm in Vikrant's room as you can see and I'm surrounded by a bunch of books. That means I'm going to talk about my favorite topics, books for toddlers. This would be catered to ages maybe two to three, uh, earlier maybe one and a half if your child is really into books. So I've broadly divided them into eight categories. So if you're starting out a collection, you can start with one or two books from each category and take it from there. But be aware that your child may not fall in love with every single book that you pick for them instantly. So give it some time and also know that it may be a hit or a miss. But this is a good place to start. So I'll start with the picture books first because picture books are something all kids love and they're a good way to introduce books to them. And these are the simplest picture books. You can have these when your child is a baby. In fact, Vikrant used to have these uh, even before he was one and he used them well into his twos because these are pictures of real objects. They are not just drawings and these are things they see in their everyday life. So these are a great way for them to relate to their surroundings. Like they can identify something from this book and find it in their home. So you can also learn colors, uh, recognition, like you can say point to a yellow vehicle and it's a little tricky for them and they'll get to it. Once your child has moved past these simple picture books, you can even introduce simple encyclopedias. Like never underestimate how much a child comprehends at, uh, at the age of toddlers. Uh, these are just regular encyclopedias that have pictures of real stuff and information and facts. Uh, that you can talk to your child about and most topics your child can understand and you'll be surprised how interested they are in these so this is just a book about animals and if your child is you know interested in animals like I think most toddlers are you can get them a real book like this instead of like Dear Zoo is an amazing book for babies it's got lift the flaps and drawings of animals you can make the animal sounds so it's an amazing book for babies but you don't have to be limited by books like these you can actually move on to real books with real pictures and data and they can be in whatever topic your child is interested in nature and animals are a safe bet but if your child is into cars and vehicles like most uh, kids are boys in particular my son loves this book it's just called cars trains ships and planes so if you're looking for these, you can look for DK or Discovery Kids or even National Geographic. You don't need a lot of these, but one or two is good to have and see if they find the curiosity to open it themselves and look at the pictures. And whenever they do, uh, be there to sort of engage them and talk to them about what they're seeing. Slightly different from traditional encyclopedias are books like these. These are absolutely beautiful. This one's called Autumn and they have all the different seasons in the series. Uh, but it's got pictures, it's got no words. So your child can simply look at them. And uh, these are highly rated by Waldorf educators all over the world. So these uh, just go through the activities that happen in the different seasons of the year. So a great way to introduce seasons for I think younger toddlers, I think even babies can look at these and be fascinated. This one called Nature Anatomy is more appropriate for slightly older kids. I've seen it being recommended by lots of homeschooling parents and for even older kids, even school going kids. So if we find a flower on the street, we would bring it back home and try to identify what it is. It's good to have a book like this in your collection because it grows with your child and it helps them learn more about their surroundings and it gives them an appreciation for good artwork as well in my opinion. Next are storybooks because toddlers are very imaginative. Their imagination is getting better and better and their attention spans are also getting better. So they stick through a storyline. They stick through a simple narrative. So you can introduce a bunch of stories that have uh, two or three minutes duration, you know, not more than that because they're still pretty young and simple storylines. So uh, I love Curious George for this age and Vikrant did too. This was in my toddler favorites video and he still loves it. Curious George is a little monkey that goes on adventures and he relates to all of these stories. So that's amazing. So this is a collection of five minute stories. It's got about 10 or 12 of them. But you also get individual Curious George books, which I've um, got a bunch of. 
so these are all really good for them to have um, simple enough that toddlers can understand and complex enough to hold their attention I think there's a sweet spot for a toddler's attention Curious George is a great starting point for stories for toddlers and Pete the cat is also really good like we have this for a while now and Vikrant loves it I'm not a big fan of the illustrations but Vikrant is hooked so whatever floats his boat right so this is a book about a cat that goes on adventures it does things it learns stuff and they have a big range of Pete the Cat books you'll find them everywhere I link this one in the description box because this one um, teaches them about different colors and it's got uh, a little moral at the end which is also very sweet it says no matter what you step so it's about a cat that steps in different things and its shoes change color but at the end it says no matter what you step in life just goes on it's okay it's all good so it's a funny story but also kind of meaningful and the illustrations are very captivating for a child so I highly recommend one or two Pete the Cat books. Pout Pout Fish is also another popular book for kids and this one's called Pout Pout Fish Far Far From Home. It's about a fish that goes on a vacation and misses his uh, little toy that he left back home. But this is a cute story but not all Pout Pout Fish books are uh, approved by me. <laughs> Some of them are not. I, I feel like some of them are not appropriate but uh, some of them are really good and Vikrant loves them. The pictures are very funny and very detailed so they capture a child's attention and they love looking at this. The words rhyme which is also another important uh, aspect of a storybook for kids like rhyming words. For babies it was even more important but for toddlers also they love, they enjoy listening to a rhymed storyline. So I would pick up a couple of uh, storybooks, simple storybooks for your collection. As they're getting the hang of stories, you can introduce more books that have even more complex plots. Some books are classics and have been around for decades and some of them have really nice stories but others are not very appropriate for this day and age. So this one called Blueberries for Sal is a very sweet story about a little girl who goes on a blueberry um, picking with her mom. So that one is one of Vikran's favorites. If You Give a Mouse a Cookie is also a funny book. Uh, it's got little illustrations and it makes my son laugh every time. So that's a nice one too. Cat in the Hat is a classic by Dr. Seuss and it's very captivating for little kids who've begun to understand stories. The Velveteen Rabbit is a classic and Vikrant has just uh, started to get into this. I got it for him when he was just under three years of age. It's a much longer story so a little toddler might not be able to stick through it but uh, Vikrant started loving it when he was close to three years old and it's one of his favorites now. You can also look at classic books like We're Going on a Bear Hunt or uh, The Little Engine That Could. I'll put links in the description box for the books that I'm not showing in this video. So for your collection, you can get about four or five storybooks. You can either borrow them at the library or borrow them from a friend or buy them secondhand if you don't want to invest in new books. And the next sort of category is potty training because that usually happens during this age. We have other potty training books but these two are uh, Vikrant's absolute favorites. These are really good books like this one is called Just Potty and I'll uh, put a link in the description box but this has the cutest illustrations ever and uh, very few words. So even if you are not reading the book to your child, your child can just pick it up and look at it and they'll get what's going on. And Where's the Poop is another favorite. So so this one was really good when I had to have Vikrant sit on the potty for more than two seconds. A little bit graphic in that it has pictures of poo but if you're okay with that this is a great investment for that crucial crucial stage of potty training. The next category of books is uh, those that teach a child numbers and alphabets and shapes and colors and things like that. I must admit I don't have a lot of books in this category we just have more story books but if you are so inclined you can get one or two books books that teach a child to count. I do have a few that I like. One is called um, 10 Little Fingers, Two Small Hands. But this is a very cute book about little kids learning to count. So this is a nice book if your child is 
uh, under two years of age or under 18 months and learning to count. One, two, three is another book that he really liked and I think he learned from. Uh, this is by Sandra Boynton. I've talked about her other books in a separate review video of mine but this is another great book to have in your collection if you're just starting out with numbers. It's, it's kind of funny but at the same time you learn a little bit. This one by, uh, is this Dr. Seuss? No, this is, yeah, this is by Dr. Seuss. It's called 10 Apples Up on Top. This is also kind of funny but at the same time it's got numbers and counting in it. This is one uh, that Vikrant did like. Very Hungry Caterpillar is also really good for babies to toddlers. Like I feel like some good books are an investment. Like they last you for different uh, stages of a baby's life. Like this one also has numbers and colors. Some of the other popular books are Chica Chica Boom Boom and Brown Bear Brown Bear. We don't own them but we have read them uh, from the library. So one or two books in this category are nice to have uh, at this stage. When they are around two years of age you can also invest in a couple of activity books because they start getting into doing things with their hands and Melissa and Doug makes these really great books called Water Wow and they have a huge collection of these. Vikrant was not into these in the beginning but he has gotten into them lately and he loves them. So these are basically coloring books but you don't have to use crayons or anything. It comes with a little pen that you have to fill up with water and the toddler can kind of color on it and watch it as it dries up and becomes invisible. So you can use these over and over again. These are really good for when you don't want to make a mess and when you're traveling and stuff. I think when Vikrant was closer to three, I got him these wipe clean activity books by Pretty Baby. Some kids get into these much earlier and some kids don't. Vikrant got into these when he was closer to three years old and uh, he loves them now. Like he's not good at these at all like he's still figuring out but they encourage the child to you know make circles draw straight lines you know curvy lines and all those things i am not pushing this on him at all like sometimes he'll just scribble in it but these are dry arrays so you can use a whiteboard uh, marker and a eraser to just clean it right up so they make less waste i think and they can use it over and over again to practice so i have a couple of these but i think one is good to start with this is called montessori letter work so it has alphabets in sandpaper so they can actually run their finger over it and it's got a rough texture so they understand how an alphabet feels so they do a lot of these in montessori schools and this is a nice little book to have to go along with that and this next one is where's waldo i think we're getting into waldo books it's basically a book with crowded scenes and uh, you have to find this particular guy so these are really good for traveling as well when you want your child to be engaged for a few minutes they also come in smaller sizes as well so i'll have to get a couple more of these because we are totally enjoying these and also no toddler collection is complete without bedtime books and I have a whole video on bedtime books so please check that out. Some of our favorite books are in that video. Uh, one of them is If Animals Kissed Goodnight. It is such a sweet book with the sweetest illustrations ever so I highly recommend going and checking out that video as well. And uh, one of the books that I added to this collection is called Goodnight India. I was on the lookout for a good book about India for a long time and I found this one on Amazon. This is so sweet you guys. The illustrations are beautiful and the author kind of takes us through different cities of India. And Vikrant, like most kids who are uh, growing up abroad, who have, who don't have that much of a connection with India and where they are from, we look at the different cities and we talk about them and we say that's where your grandparents are from and that's where your parents are from. So it's a nice thing to have. It's very unfortunate that we have to uh, find a connection to our home through books and stuff and not just, you know, have it naturally and many of you ask me why I don't talk about Indian books like Indian kid books like Panchatantra and things like that so I do have a few of them I have Panchatantra, Jataka Tales and Hitopadesha so I have a few stories in each book but uh, I you know it's very unfortunate but I don't find them appropriate for toddlers at all. Like some of them are way too violent. <laughs> Not all of these stories are bad. I do read some of them to him and he totally enjoys them. And there are some stories that are I find not appropriate and I just make up my own version and I tell him that. And for example, this one is called The Hardworking Woodcutter and it's about a man who carries a heavy load uh, on his shoulders, an old man. 
and a young man comes and says let me help you with that and the old man says no i don't want like i think the moral they were going for is we must not be a burden to others and we must always do our work ourselves like i get it we must work hard and not be lazy right but the subtle moral that uh, the story is telling your child is that no matter how heavy the burden is you must carry it all by yourself and it's not okay to accept help and that's something that i don't want my son to think i want him to think that it's okay to collaborate it's okay to accept help and also help in return right it's a collaborative world so i stay away from books like these for now he might get into them later on when he is i think emotionally mature enough to get the intention behind the story uh, until then we're just reading good night india and if you guys have any more recommendations about indian books uh, that are appropriate for children please leave them down in the description box below i am someone who always longs for a connection with india even though we are far away and i would love my son to have that and also fairy tales you'll notice that i haven't spoken about any fairy tales even though they are classics and they're very popular i don't have a single disney book uh, well except for this one the cars one but this i think doesn't count as a fairy tale and i don't have like cinderella or snow white or uh, you know pinocchio or none of those i don't know if there are versions that are good for toddlers but i haven't found them most of the fairy tales that i've grown up with i feel like when i look at them now i used to love them when i was a kid but when i look at them now they are so inappropriate they have a, a view of the world that i don't want my child uh, to propagate so i i i stay away from uh, those kind of fairy tales and the damsel in distress kind of books i hope you found some ideas for your own toddler's book collection through this video please give this video a thumbs up if you found this useful that would let me know that all of this uh, cleaning up that i have to do now is not going to waste and let me know in the comment section if you have any other books that your toddler enjoys i would love to add to my own collection and i'll see you in one of my next videos until then take care bye